I just can't understand why you've gone in this direction, Rick. It's just what happened to you? It's it's a very special day for me. This is the first time that I've ever had the pleasure of interviewing a vegan. You know, with all the vegans that send me nasty comments and all the vegans that I've tried to contact and I wanted to ask some questions, well, finally I get a chance and I get to interview one of the premier vegans in the space, Belle Shine, who's been a vegan for a very long time and knows everything about the vegan diet and how we can benefit from it. So let's start off, introduce yourself, and let me know some of your experience in the vegan space. Well, hello, Rick. It's fantastic to be here with you. I'm, I'm, I'm pleasured beyond beyond description. So, um, you know, what I'd like to say is we were talking for about uh, bananas and I, I think that's a healthy diet, but only when supplemented with something like, you know, nice cereal or some Pop-Tarts or something like that. And uh, that's what I tend to do. I tend to uh, spend most of my time eating uh, the odd Pop-Tart here and there. Um, not too many, not too many, because the, the kids take them all. Kids are always into the pop tart. But, uh, yes. Um, and, of course, no animals. No animals. But it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'm just talking in circles, and I, I'm, I'm a bit shy. Well, that's that's okay. You have nothing to worry about me. I'm a very nice person, and I respect anyone that I'm talking to. And I just want to put you at ease and know that I have two very long-term vegan friends. There are two women that I know. They've been vegan for over over 20 years at, at the minimum. The other one's over 30 years. And I grow a lot of tropical fruits in my yard. I have bananas. I have avocados, I have pineapples, and I also have things like tomatoes, um, I have loquats, all kinds of fruit. So I'm constantly giving my vegan friends a choice of whatever fruit they have. When the fruit is ready, I always say, hey, you know, would you like to come over and, and have some fruit? You know, you can pick it yourself or I'll pick it for you. The problem is that my vegan friends are not exactly the strongest people, so when it comes time to harvest the bananas, they're not going to go up the ladder and they're not going to lift a 50 or 60 pound bunch of bananas and then try to get them down. Plus, they complain a lot about the sap that drips off the banana plant. But just like you, uh, one of my friends, she likes to have Cheerios with bananas. So she'll put the Cheerios in the dish, put, you know, well, I don't know what that stuff is. It's some kind of white liquid. It's not milk, but I think it's soy based or almond based. And I've always said, well, can you, you know, where do you get the milk out of a soybean or an almond? But, hey, you know, if they like it, so they'll put the bananas in the cereal. And, of course, they love to eat bananas as a snack. Now, I don't know anyone that eats Pop-Tarts. I do remember as a kid the commercials for Pop-Tarts. You know, I was in the 70s. You know, I looked at it, and I thought it was kind of interesting. But I've only probably taken a Pop-Tart once in my life, and I didn't like it. You know, to, you know, everybody has their own taste, but what is it about pop tarts that really gets you interested or really, um, you know, excites your taste? I, I think, well, first, let me just address the, the point about the pop tarts and, and you not being very interested in pop tarts. That's, for me, that's great because that means there are more pop tarts for me. Okay. Because, Again, I've got to, I've got to have my stash away from the kids or it's just all over, all over, Red Rover. So, um, you know, the, about Pop Tarts, why do I like them? Well, they just taste so good. They're so good. They're good on their own. They're good crushed up on top of things. They're, they're good like a travel snack. They're, they're good as, you know, a main meal. They just work, work in every situation. And I, I want to address something that you, you, um, quite, uh, harshly said about your vegan friends. 
you told me that uh, you're vegan friends, but not so strong. I think that's a, that's a gross generalization. I don't think it's that vegans are not strong. I think it's that vegans are enlightened. And, and vegans, vegans know how to play their cards correctly so they can get all the other people to do the work for them. You see, the vegans are the leaders here. They're just, they're leading hell. They make themselves look weak so that you'll do the work for them. Well, that explains a lot because the one vegan that I know, she has a, a boyfriend that says he's a, he's into fitness and bodybuilding and he's got a nice physique compared to me because I'm very skinny. You know, I have little tiny arms. You know, and he never seems to be able to lift anything up. He, when he shakes your hand, it's kind of soft. Maybe it's just a game that he's playing. Cause a lot of times I have fun. I'll grab his, is that his yeah, hand? when his hand is weak, you know, when you, when you shake hands, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a wet noodle. He's got a limp hand. Yeah. He's got a limp hand. I mean, I don't know, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's like you said, you know, the vegans are trying to manipulate the rest of us into showing how independent or strong we are so that they can take advantage of that and they don't have to work as much. So it would be like somebody that had automation and they set up a system where they don't have to do work or maybe they have passive income or something like that. So that would make sense. I always thought it was just because they weren't that strong, but that's just my observation. If you think about it in terms of uh, technology, you guys are like the chat GPT of stream, and we are the internet trolls of getting you to do things. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> are you vegan too? You've got a lot of fruit. Um, no, I'm not vegan. I don't like the taste of fruit. Fruit does not... Uh, I, I, I don't like anything sweet. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of fruit. How is that possible? I'm not quite sure, but I, I can tell you from my own experience that one of my favorite things, which you probably hate, is beef. I love a big, juicy steak. A real one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> not that soy boy fake steak. I'm talking about a real steak. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! That, this is oh, I didn't, I didn't realize I was coming on to talk to someone who eats meat. That oh, I, I'm lost for words. Well, that doesn't happen very often, except when I've got a pop tart in my mouth. That um, would do it, you know. If you're chewing on a pop tart, you can't really talk. Oh my goodness. Don't you ever, don't you ever think about the cows when you're eating your steak? Oh, yes, I do. I, I love cows. Every time I drive by a cow pasture, I look and I see all those cows out there grazing. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, pretty soon that's going to be a delicious steak. A lot of steaks. Oh, my goodness. That's like me driving past the cow. Oh, my goodness. Driving past a Kellogg's, Kellogg's factory. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I, I can't believe it. So what about, where do you draw the line? Uh, draw the line in terms of animals? Yes. Well, let's just say that that line is not a very prominent one. Um, a lot of times when I'm out and I'm working in my yard, I may look around and I'll see something that looks actually tasty. For example, an iguana. If there's an iguana eating my fruit or my vegetables, my vegan friends would get very mad at me if I let something eat all their fruit and vegetables. They come back and all their bananas are eaten and all the tomatoes have been turned into mush. And, you know, you've got anything from a duck or an iguana or something destroying the garden. The ducks are not so bad because they eat insects. And I like that. I don't know. I don't think you would want to eat insects, but they definitely eat the insects. But when it comes to... A lot of protein. Yeah, there's a lot of protein in insects. And, you know, if you're a vegan, you can appreciate that much time and effort 
is spent to try to keep insects from eating plants. And we know that there are animals that eat plants. There's birds that eat plants. You know, they, they actually have to kill quite a few animals to prevent the vegetables and, and fruits from being eaten. But when I go through my yard and I happen to see something eating my fruits or vegetables, I'll go outside and I will decide what I'm going to do with it. Now, today I had a very angry possum living in my van. And I know that's probably a reference to the Red Green Show, but I did not harm the possum in any way. I grabbed it by the tail and I put it in a bag and I took it over to Horse Country and let it go. So I was able to clean out my van and, and get that back. But an iguana, what am I going to do? If I let the iguana go, it's just going to come back and it's going to come and it's going to be on my papaya tree eating papayas. It may be eating loquats or it may be eating bananas. So I just took the iguana and I put it in the kitchen. In fact, I still have the iguana in the kitchen right now. It's in the freezer. But, is he still you know, alive? Oh, he's, he's in the freezer. He's not no, it's in the, it's in the freezer. You know, I, I don't, uh -huh. iguanas are invasive. I don't want to have more iguanas around here. I'll go outside and my whole garden will be stripped. There won't be any fruits or vegetables. It'll just be dead, you know, dead plants and iguana poop. Oh my goodness. But can't you like, Entice them away from your your fruits. Just just offer them a pop tart or something. <laughs> well, I I don't know. I've never tried to give an iguana. Well, actually, I've tried to give iguana bread, and I've tried to give them um, crackers. They don't eat that. They only like raw fruit, and they eat leaves. So they only eat you know live whole foods. They're not going to eat any of that processed food. So. So, because you're worried about your tomatoes getting crushed, instead you crush the iguana and chuck him in the freezer. That's what? just what? disgusting. <laughs> I mean, where where do you draw the line? I mean, why did you decide not to eat the possum? Not to eat what? The, the possum? possum? Well, the reason I didn't eat the possum is because, I mean, first of all, I've never cooked possum before. They look nasty. The thing looks like a big rat. And I'm thinking, you know, would I eat a rat? Well, if I was desperate, if I was really hungry, I'd eat a rat. But it just looked disgusting in a way. But on the other hand, I know that if I was hungry and I needed something to eat, I would definitely have cooked it. But I don't know anything about cooking possum. And I thought, really, the possum, it doesn't really hurt my garden. They don't eat fruits. I mean, I've never seen a possum eat my vegetables, but they eat insects and you know, they're a little messy, and the thing chewed the wiring harness in my van, and it made a nest, and it left poop everywhere, but that's easy to clean up. So it wasn't something that meant, hey, I got to get rid of them. I just had to move them out of here. Uh, and I know they have about a one-mile range, so I got him. I put him in a bag. I put him in the back of my truck. I took him a couple of miles away and dumped him out of the bag, and he showed me his teeth and made a funny noise and then just walked away. So no harm done there. He's got a one mile range. You make him sound like a GPS or something. But well, you know, if, you, if you're going to eat those, maybe you need to shave them. You know, you need to get the get the old. <laughs> that is a possibility. I haven't thought about that. But you know, I watched a lot of cartoons growing up, and there was a cartoon called Barney Bear, and I remember he said, "I'm going to have possum for dinner. I'm going to have possum for dinner." So I, I saw that, and in the end, he ended up cutting a tree down. It fell on his house. The, the thing went through the roof, and the possum was hanging by a tail, and he, he fed him dinner. So I didn't want to go through all that. So I said, let me just take the possum somewhere else, let somebody else deal with him. Or her, because I, the, I didn't hold up the possum to see if it was male or female. Ah, uh, you see. So even the TV shows are more enlightened these days. There wouldn't be, I'm going to have possum for dinner. It'd be more like, I'm going to have parrots for dinner. I'm going to have broccoli for dinner. It, you wouldn't have all this kind of, I'm going to eat animals. But, but so, you wouldn't eat a possum. Would you eat a dog? Uh, that's a good question. I guess if I was hungry enough and I had no choice, probably not. Because dogs, for example, dogs and cats, they're not vegans. They'll eat just about anything. You know, it's like a rat. I, I don't, I don't think I would eat a dog. I mean, I'm, that or I think the only place where they eat dogs routinely is in Korea. They have a, a dog eating tradition, which I think even over there they're getting away from. So hmm. no, I, I generally, I won't eat anything except vegan animals. Vegan animals. So canaries are okay. 
I mean, I don't think there's much meat on a canary, but I guess it would be. Not a bit of canary day? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that would be like eating squab, which is a pigeon. I just can't understand why you've gone in this direction, Rick. It's just, what happened to you? Well, let me tell you how it started. When I was a kid, I was about 15 years old, and I was smaller than all the other kids, and I got really frustrated. So I thought, you know what? I, I don't want to live anymore. I just want to, I just want to drop dead. And I thought, well, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not crazy. So I thought, what would be the best way to drop dead, have fun at the same time? I would eat the food they told me not to eat, the highest fat meat, you know, cooked with lard, all the stuff that's going to give you a heart attack. And then when I saw a Time magazine with a frowning bacon and eggs on a plate, I thought, that's just perfect. You know, I'm eating this way already. I won't make it until I'm 20 or 30 years old. So I figured I'd be dead by now. Of course, you know, how can you be 55 and not have a heart attack when you're eating all this meat? Yes, well, uh, maybe it's just an anomaly, but I know that it's it's just a matter of time. If you're if you're not eating stuff that is good for you, as as the all the the diabetes association, the everywhere they all say that apple apple a day keeps the doctor away, they wouldn't be saying that if it wasn't true. You would think so, but a lot of the things that they told me when I was growing up didn't seem to be true. You know, in fact, one of the things that I used to make me uh, consume was that nasty Ovaltine that always made me sick. And the oatmeal, oh, oatmeal was terrible. I had nothing but diarrhea. You like oatmeal? Diarrhea. Oh, I guess you could put bananas in the oatmeal. What's that? Oh, yeah, that gave you diarrhea. Yes. Yes. I I never experienced that. I never. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Yes. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm a, a Canadian logger sometimes. It, it's... Yes. Okay. I, I can understand. The bathroom activities. Hey, all that fiber, you know. They always told me that I would get constipation because I don't eat any fiber. Said, you don't eat fiber, you're going to get constipation. But when it's time to go to the bathroom, that's a five minute trip. And that includes the time it takes to wash your hands and dry off. So I'm in and out of there so fast, you'd never know the difference. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, when I was. Five minutes. Well, I, I drop my load and wash up and dry my hands and walk out. Oh my goodness. That's like at least. I mean, I I think that's not healthy, Rick. You, you maybe it isn't any longer than that. Like I'm in there for hours. I I you know, like I said, I have vegan friends, and I know I got called one time to unclog the sink, and I'll never forget. You know, I was in the kitchen unclogging the sink, and I heard someone go into the bathroom. It was 20 minutes before she got out of the bathroom, so. I figured, you know, what are you doing in the bathroom for 20 minutes? Are you, you know, maybe you're on YouTube podcasting or maybe you're writing a novel or I don't know what you're doing. But she comes out, you know, oh, did you finish the sink? Yeah, I finished the sink 10 minutes ago. I took the trap out. I ran a snake through it. You know, I, I flushed it out. I put it back together. and I'm sitting there waiting. It's like, it's done. Like, well, I was in the bathroom. You know, you can't hurry when you're in the bathroom. Okay. So I said, well, are you taking a bath? No, I was using the toilet. Okay, whatever. 20 minutes, hey, that's fine. You know, but evidently it's true. I've seen all the commercials. Like they have the potty. They used to have the potty putter, which was like a little golf set that you could do when you're on the toilet. And I go, hmm, well, that's interesting. Okay. Some people spend more than five minutes in the restroom. Me, I'm in and out of there. I did 18 holes done by... <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you must be, when you go to the golf course, you must be one of the best sinking it in every every time on the putt because you're sitting there and you got the little thing of the toilet, you keep knocking it in, you got your putter all, you know, figured out and you're good to go. Exactly. It, it, it's great. So, But, you know, speaking about um, the, the toilet, I, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, 
I, I don't have to use the plunger more than once a day. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. I don't even own a plunger. What? No. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. I think you need to go and see the doctor. Right? Well, I haven't been to a doctor since 1996, so they would probably hate me. I was but a twinkle in the eye of my parents in 1996, as you can see. I'm very young. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm an old man. I'm extremely old. That's why I got so much gray hair. And I, I cannot believe that you haven't been to the doctor since 1996. You don't know what could be going wrong with your body. I could drop dead tomorrow of a heart attack, you know. I could have just a big one and, oh, you know, and I'm, I'm dead. But that'll be good because I'll die happy. How? But, but how are you happy? Or, or like, you're, you're eating iguanas. Like, I don't know. The food tastes good. I can work all day. I don't, I don't have any aches or pains. I got plenty of energy. I have a, I'm in a good mood. I'm, I'm not depressed like a lot of the people I know. And I enjoy my life. It's fun, you know, and I don't care. I'm a poor guy. I got a beat up old car. I live in a broken down house. It doesn't bother me. I don't have any aches or pains either. Unless I stand up. It, it, it's, it's fine. But if I stand up, that is an issue. I, I'll tell you one thing. I had this issue where I had this back pain, right? A terrible back pain. And then when I, my hair's in my face. And then when I, uh, I changed my diet and went strictly vegan and the back pain went away. The pain went straight to my knees. Okay. Well, I mean, I've never had back pain, so I don't know what that feels like. And the only time I had knee pain is when I wiped out on my skateboard as a kid and my knee got swollen and it felt bad. But I was a teenager back then. I haven't had knee pain since then. I, I don't I don't know what that feels like. The only time I get pain, maybe I hit my hand with a hammer or something or I bump into something and it goes away, you know, but I, I don't I don't know what it's like to deal with chronic pain. You see you wouldn't be if you were a vegan, you wouldn't be worried about that pain from the hammer because you'd be enlightened and then you'd be getting all the other guys to do the hammer and for you. Well, the problem is I'm not pretty like you women vegans that you can convince the men to do things for them. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not attractive. I mean, the only guys that would be impressed by me are probably the ones I don't want to be around. So I can't use the same technique, but if it works for you, that's great. Yes. I have a way with guys, you know, I just kind of stand there, you know, casually kind of put my hair around my, my face like that and, you know, we can pop tart up and they're all over that <clears throat> well that's true i'm sure it would work for most of them i mean it wouldn't work for me but it would definitely work for the majority um i'm a bit odd you know you'd have to have a big juicy steak or maybe a fresh fried iguana or something like that to get my attention but pop tart you know you know i've never actually tried to i mean i've eaten a pop tart but i've never tried to feed one to a duck i wonder if a duck would eat a pop tart that's interesting but uh, so, uh, do you eat ducks as well? Um, maybe a few times a year. I'll probably have one later on in November. But I, I only eat the ducks that are aggressive. The friendly ducks, they're they're kind of like pets. But sometimes the ducks, they'll go there and kill ducklings, or they'll mate with too many females. I've had ducks that are so aggressive they rip the feathers off the females, and it's just too much. And I try to chase them away, but they can fly. And then next thing you know, here, and there he is again. They'll mate with them on the nest if they get a chance. So when I get a really aggressive male, then I will take him to the kitchen and I will prepare him for dinner. Wow. Well, I, I, that's very shocking to hear it put that way. But, uh, you know, may, maybe if we get, may, maybe it's a good thing you're getting rid of these alpha males. You know, if we got rid of, more of these alpha males generally, we might be doing a little bit better, you know. And I, I agree with that. Yes, I've gotten rid of most of them. Giving soy, then we'd be doing okay, right? Well, how can you eat soy? Soy is, my parents used to give me tofu 
it's so disgusting. I don't know how you can, I don't know how you prepare it to make it edible. It's just, I don't know. Um, what do you mean? It's one of the most delicious things in the world. All you need to do is just like put it on the plate like that and it's done. You know, I mean, of course, if you want to, if you want, it, it has a, a bit of a taste issue in that there's no taste. Um, but, um, you know, you get around that just by sprinkling some crushed pop tarts on top. I, I figured you'd probably use pop tarts as a seasoning. That would probably do it. But, you know, every time that my parents tried to serve me tofu in any way possible, it always made me feel like bad, you know, and, and it, again, usually diarrhea would result, but it, it just was not something that I liked. You know, I was much more interested in my homemade yogurt than something like tofu, but eh, you know, everybody has their own taste. He, here's give this one a try. Give this one a try, right? So what what you gonna do? Is you're gonna crush up some pop tarts, get your pestle and mortar and crush up the pop tarts, right? Then lay it out and get your tofu and cover it with your crushed pop tarts. So it's nice and covered. Then Put some canola oil in the fry pan and then fry up the tofu like that. Absolutely delicious. It's just like oh. it, you could put it in a burger like that. Anything. It's great. Oh, interesting. Fried well, fried crushed pop tarts tofu. I call it. Okay. It's funny you mentioned burger because I have a very famous burger that I make, but I know you wouldn't like it. I call it the heart attack burger. A heart attack burger? What's in that? Heart attack burger starts with buns made out of pork rinds and eggs. And then you have four one-half pound patties of ground beef. And then you have eight slices of aged cheddar cheese. You may have bacon. Maybe not. Depends on how you make it. But there's going to be onions. that You'd like that because that's a vegetarian. But they're fried in lard. And the whole thing is just you know, like that, well, that big, more or less. And I'll tell you, it's got, well, I guess around 9,000 calories. Makes a really great hamburger. Oh, my goodness. That sounds disgusting. And how many lives do you sacrifice things for that heart attack burger? You well, I'm, yourself. I'm, I'm sure, you know, like I said, any day now, I'm going to drop dead. I eat one of those heart attack burgers and I'm thinking, this is my last day. You know, I'm, oh, I got the chest pains. I feel terrible, but actually it's the opposite. I feel really good and satisfied. And after I've had my heart attack burger, I just go right back to work. I got plenty of energy, feel really good. So I don't know. But that makes no sense at all. Like every expert out there is saying that we need to be plant based. We need to be more plant based. We need to be eating the things like nuts and seeds and fruits and vegetables and, and soy and all that kind of thing. No one's saying eat meat. I agree with that. But they always tell us the things that they want us to hear. Maybe they think that it's good for us. But for some of us, it doesn't seem to work so well. I did go on a vegetarian vegan diet for about seven months in 1993. But the results I had were terrible. I ended up with constant diarrhea, and I ended up with the worst flu of my life. So I figured it's better to be dead than to live like that. Maybe someone just accidentally sneezed on something that you ate, and that's how you got sick. You know, it's nothing to do with the food. I mean, look at it like this, Brian. Think about... Think about a famous, famous vegan. Think about uh, Dr. Michael Greger. Picture of hell. Picture of hell. Right? Right. And picture of hell. And he's advocating plant-based. He's always got a broccoli in his hand. He's always got the green shirt on that represents the broccoli. He's always got the green tie on that represents more broccoli. And look at him. You couldn't get healthier. So, like, where's the argument? 
Well, that's a very good point. And we all know how attractive Michael Greger is. However, what is his age? How old is he? 21. Okay, well, that I that's think. fine then, Neil. That's good to know. I, mean, I, I always thought that I was older. Hmm? Looks his age, right? Okay. Well, I guess he does look his age, but he is younger than me. I think he's like three or, three or four y- younger than me. I'm not sure of his exact age, but you see, when I think of a doctor, I think about somebody like Anthony Chafee. Have you ever seen Anthony Chafee? Uh, yes. Yes, I have seen him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He looks very sick. What about, <laughs> what about Sean Baker? He's also looks he sick, right? He <laughs> There you go. Okay. So, <laughs> that's funny. That's not representative. That's not representative of health, as far as I'm concerned. So, in your consideration, what would represent health? If you look at somebody, you look at one of those doctors. What would be healthy to you? What you know? What physical traits or whatever makes them look healthy? Very, very thin. Okay. Yes. The thinner, the better, because any fat is bad. That is bad. Look at these guys. You cited Kate e. Baker. I mean, there's deposits of fat all over the body. Fat, fat. Like six, six fat deposits on their stomach that they pretend are abs. Like fat here. It's just disgusting. You know, and look at someone like Michael Greger, not as Fat to be found. Okay, I I will I will have to agree to some extent, but then again, are you saying that all carnivores are fat? It's disgusting looking at them. It's yes, and right? look at look how small vegans are. I mean, I look quite big, but that's because of my hair. If I if I shaved my hair off, I would look slim, slim Jim. Okay, so you think that being skinny means that you're healthy? Yes. Okay, I you know what? I can agree with that. Okay, I can agree with that. So I'm skinny, so I must be very healthy. Well, yes, but you're going against all the advice. Your body is playing tricks on you, Rick. Okay. And can you explain what those tricks are? Um, I, I don't know how the, <laughs> I don't know how the physiology works, but it's, <laughs> it's something to do with the, the cholesterol and, and all that kind of thing. You're, Crazy high cholesterol. It's it's probably through the roof, and you know it's only a matter of time before your head explodes. I just hope okay. it doesn't happen during this interview because I'm going to be distraught. Well, if it does happen during the interview, then you'll know that I went without any suffering. Yes, well, but you know. What am I going to do if that happens? Then I'm just going to sit here and talk to myself for the next half an hour. Well, hey, that's that's fine. I'm sure you have a lot to say. Or, you know, you could talk to the audience and explain all the benefits of the healthy vegan lifestyle and how it's benefited you and, and all the nuances of the flavors of Pop-Tarts and all the fruits and vegetables that you like. And you can talk about the wonderful vegans and how attractive they are, like Michael Greger and... Um, What's the other one? Uh, Neil Barnard, or there's a couple of other vegans out yeah. there. I know you like those because you know when I when I mentioned Anthony Chafee or Sean Baker, you were like, "Oh, that's just terrible." You know, oh, that's that's really yeah, bad. That's terrible. So let let me speak directly to the audience now. I mean, you know, when you look at us, when you compare Rick and myself, who looks healthy to you? Is it is it the meat eater or is it the tofu eater? Seriously, have a look. Who's got more hair? Yes, question answered. 
the go. Well, we we have to admit that you do have a lot more hair. There's no question about yes. it. I yes. don't know how you got that very interesting color. I mean, it looks almost like it's blue, but maybe it's just the background and the camera. No, it, it is blue. Um, I I don't know. I, I used to like blueberry pop tarts, and uh, it was around that time it changed. I, it was bright red before. Like I was, um, I was what they commonly call uh, a ranger in Australia, short for a orangutan. Um, so uh, uh, it was bright red. Yeah, the kids were very cruel. You know, at school, they used to call me Fanta Pants, that kind of thing. Um, so um, I was actually quite happy when it started changing. But it's it's all natural. Okay. Yeah, it's not something that came out of a bottle. It's not a hair color. It's just something. No, it's, no, a it's, it's a side effect. It's a side effect on a healthy diet. That way everyone can see that your diet is so good. They can look at your hair and they can look at you and say, oh, she's eating such good good food and she's doing so well and you know and she may have a back pain now and then or a knee pain or whatever but otherwise she's fine unlike those horrible carnivores that are always on the move they don't have any pain and they have their hair is like you know a darker color and you know it, it's just one of those things and the carnivore skin is always kind of smooth and tight and you know the vegans they tend to have that nice little whatever they have under the their neck or they look like they came out of a concentration camp like Michael Greger that's what they want skinny as possible so so uh, typical with you carnivores you just focused on the headlines you know what we can see and you're not focused on the nuance think about the nuance you know LDL <laughs> is bad that's why it's called bad cholesterol okay you know it's not called bad cholesterol for no reason it's bad because it's bad. So, uh, there's a reason for everything. I, I believe you. You know, and, and you don't even, you haven't been to the doctor since 1996. You don't even know what your cholesterol is. You could be like 600 LDL for all you know. Well, if that's even a number. I have a question for you about cholesterol. Yeah. Why do we have cholesterol in the first place? Shouldn't it be zero? Of course, it should be as close to zero as possible. That's what they say. Bad, bad, bad. It's bad cholesterol. So if it's bad, you don't want it. Okay. Of course, well, it should be zero. My understanding is that our body will make cholesterol on its own. So basically, our body wants to kill us. That's what it looks like. Of course. Yeah, I mean, that's how we evolved. It makes sense, doesn't it? Why would we have evolved to be doing doing the other this is it just makes sense okay, we have so. to manage we we evolved to be smarter so we can manage our health and rick you are choosing not to manage your health and today i'm going to take this opportunity to plead with you to change your ways okay do what you do you suggest what do you suggest that i do Cut out the iguanas, cut out the steaks, cut out the occasional shaved possums and ducks, and go on a plant-based protocol. Which is? Go, go down to your local supermarket, buy some boxes of pop carts or, or crates of them, if, if that's what you, you know, you like to do. Get some crates of pop tarts, some tofu, some carrots, some celery, and some broccoli, and just that. Oh, and don't forget the spinach. The spinach is really good. Spinach is going to do wonders for if you've got any pain at all. Spinach will be really good at giving the nutrition you need to rebuild and get rid of that pain. Okay, I'll, either that or you'll end up like Popeye. Exactly. You know that. Popeye wasn't downing steaks, was he? He was doing spinach. Yeah, but who was the who was the character that was eating steaks in the Popeye cartoons? 
was it? Uh, I don't know. Who was it? Well, who was the one that was sort of an enemy? Popeye was okay. always after yeah. olive oil. Luto. Luto. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but see how fat he was? Uh, that's true. You know, he probably looked more like Anthony Chafee or Sean Baker than uh, yeah. Michael Krager. Yes, that's right. You know, olive oil, picture of health. Yes, yes, that would fit exactly with the very skinny, uh, vegan looking. And, and not only that, her name was Olive Oil. So you know she was eating those healthy oils. And again, she's the enlightened one, right? She's just sitting back, relaxing, playing the victim all the time and going, come on, Popeye, you go and fight that big fat guy. Eat your spinach and get out there, buddy. Well, that's, that's it. He has to eat the spinach to get the strength to go and fight everybody else. Right. So she was the enlightened one. So do you eat spinach on a regular basis? Yes, I do. I, I, I love a bit of spinach. Probably not as much as I should because, you know, I, I do enjoy the pop tarts and tofu, but, uh, you know, spinach from time to time is good. Do you eat the spinach raw? Do you cook it or do you juice it? Oh, juice, juice. Yes, that's the way to go. Yeah. So you'll have a spinach smoothie. That's right. And if you put tofu in that, it's really nice and creamy. Okay. <laughs> it's creamy, all right. It's like green, green cream, I guess you would call it. That must be really delicious. Well, that's how you know it's healthy. Okay. I always thought that in order to be healthy, it had to taste bad. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know, you get used to it. Okay. You know, yeah, when I was like, a kid, my parents always told me that. I guess it's like beer, right? It's an acquired taste. Okay, yeah, that's true. I mean, some people do like beer. Um, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, do you consume any alcohol? From time to time. Yeah. Okay. I have to make sure it's cruelty free. Oh, explain. But, uh, What's cruelty free? Well, you know, I don't want any, any stuff that's made, in, uh, you know, uh, a, a craft beer that's made in the, you know, next to a farm or anything like that, you know, where they're raising cattle. None of, none of that kind of, you know, just if it's totally, Plant based, made in a plant, you know, by people paid minimum wage, then, you know, I'm getting with that. Okay. I was not aware that there were um, alcohols that were not plant based, but I guess I learned something new every day. Well, I just worry, you know, like if, if, if it's being produced too close to a farmyard or something like that, I, I don't want any part of that. So basically, you don't like farms. Um, if you had your way, what would happen to all of the cattle that are out there now? So personally, what I would like to see happen is I would like them to be reintroduced to society and be able to live out their existence just grazing, wandering, wandering the the prairies or the forests or whatever they do and you know if they want to play a game of tennis <laughs> then they can do that okay. <laughs> whatever no restriction you're restricting these animals and not allowing them to do what they want to do what do you think they want to do i don't know i'm not an animal okay but i think we should just take the restraints off. If it wants to wander around, let it go. If it wants to, if it wants to fly to Singapore, let it go. You know. Well, what about if they, they wander the onto? What if they wander onto a railroad track or a highway? Well, that's their choice. Don't okay. don't you believe in freedom of choice? Of course I do. That's why I choose to eat meat. But but that's not the point. 
the point is, you've got to have freedom of choice for the things that I agree with. Oh, okay. So basically, I have to agree in order to have freedom. That's that's interesting. I don't think I've yeah. ever heard that before. You can have freedom within this box that I sanction that, yes. So that's basically, freedom. that's that's you're saying that we should live like the cattle do right now. They have their cow pasture, and then they're out there grazing, doing their thing. That's what we should do. We should all be in a box. Stop twisting my words. You're twisting my words. That's not what I said at all. Anyway, next. Okay. Well, here's here's another problem. You know, there are animals that like to eat other animals. Have you ever heard of, well, you know about lions and tigers and all these things out there. If we simply turn loose all the livestock, don't you think the lions and tigers would start eating them? Well, that's just nature, isn't it? Okay, so that that's good. Now, the thing is, when animals get eaten by other animals, how are they treated? Are they killed humanely, or are they just ripped apart in any way that the predator sees fit? Yes, but again, you're... you're you're equating an animal with an enlightened vegan, right? Okay. You're, you're trying to say that enlightened human should be the same as, as you know, pillagey lions. Okay. But lions are part of nature, which you think is very, very important. So you're saying that humans have nothing to do with nature. So basically... We have to let nature do its thing, and we do our own thing. But here's the problem. We have to eat, too. So if we're going to eat vegan foods like like you like Pop-Tarts, what are Pop-Tarts made out of, or do you know? Plants, I think. Okay. What types of plants? I don't know. Ones that grow in the ground. I'm not sure. Okay. Well... You know, that's the one thing I've always noticed. Most vegans, they're very aware of where their food comes from. So, I mean, I don't really know the ingredients of a Pop-Tart either, but I know that there's wheat and there's other ingredients. I mean, think about Kellogg's that makes the Pop-Tarts. What is their most famous food? What did Kellogg's become famous for making in the first place? Is it cornflakes? That's right, cornflakes. You know what, you know what you're talking about. So, in order to grow corn, what do we have to do to grow the corn? Well, we have to find some land to grow the corn on. And what's the first thing that has to be done before you start your farm? I don't know. I'm not. I'm enlightened. I'd be getting someone else to do that for me. Okay. What? Well, I agree with that. But, you know, being enlightened, you would know that in order to grow these crops, you have to destroy everything that's already there. If you have a forest, you have to clear it and destroy it. If you have a pasture, you have to plow that up. Any animals that are there are going to go hungry. So basically, if you don't kill them, then you're putting them somewhere else. Well, if all the land is turned into houses or shopping centers or farms or whatever, eventually there's no nature left for the animals. So one way or the other, the animals are going to end up getting a bad deal, if you think about it. But even if they have their own little box or little area to live in, then they have to fight over a smaller and smaller space. So what I was saying is that instead of growing all that corn, wouldn't it be better just to have a field with grass in it and just have animals that were out there grazing? And then every now and then we take one of those animals and we turn it into food for ourselves. And we do this at the right age before they get too old. Because one way or the other, if those animals are living out there, they're not going to live forever. Sooner or later, they're going to get old and die. Either that or they're going to get eaten by a predator. So when it comes down to it, whether you're eating Pop-Tarts or whether you're eating beef or anything like that, we're all getting it from the same system. Well, you know, these are all magic, wizardry, woohoo words that you're throwing out here into a big combination. but. You know, we have to remember that we are smarter than the average animal. And as 
beings that are smarter than the average animal, we get to make a choice about what we are going to eat. And the enlightened among us are choosing to eat a plant-based diet and not oh. sacrifice <laughs> lives of animals in order to in order to survive. Okay. Now, let's say that if you're, you're okay, you're the enlightened one. But what if you couldn't what if everybody was enlightened? What if there was nobody out there to actually do the work? Who in the world would grow the plants to produce the pop tarts? That's a good question, and again, I think you're just using words in sentences to confuse me, and so I I decline to answer that question. Okay, I respect your choice not to answer it, but when you think about it, there's there always has to be a system. Now, have you ever started a garden yourself? Have you ever been able to grow fruits or vegetables or anything like that? No, I li I live in a, a big concrete building. Okay, so you live in an apartment or you don't, you don't have any connection to the ground. Okay. That, a lot of people choose that. It's easier that way. They don't have to deal with cutting grass or trimming trees or dealing with problems. But you're still eating. If you're, if you're alive, you're a human being and you need to have those vegetables. There's a field somewhere that your food is being grown on. Now, pop tarts, they use wheat as an ingredient. What would happen if a bunch of deer went out there to the wheat field and started eating all the wheat, and then there was no wheat left to have your Pop-Tarts? Then what? What would you do? Well, I'd be really angry. I, I, I would be going to a different store that hadn't run out of Pop-Tarts because of this wheat problem. But I don't know. Like, you gotta, you've got to let them eat the wheat. You know, it's nature. Yeah, the problem is that it's not actually nature. If it was nature, they would be eating leaves off of trees and wild grasses and weeds like that. But because they planted this field of one crop, maybe that's corn, maybe it's wheat, you have animals out there that want to eat that crop too. Think about wild pigs. Wild pigs are always eating crops. And what do the farmer have to do? Well, they could let them eat all the crops and trample them down but then they won't have any food to sell. So what do you think the farmers have to do with these animals that are eating their crops? Do they lead them away slowly and, and uh, rehome them? They could do that, but they're going to come back. And where would they send them? Most of the time, they have to shoot them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. So. Are you saying, are you trying to say, Rick, that eating vegetables and a plant-based diet is not, is not perfect for the environment? And That's nature? exactly, that's exactly what I'm saying. No, I just can't accept that. My education to date has told me the opposite. Well, that, that's good to know. What I'm just telling you is what I've seen and what I know. Whether or not that actually takes place, I don't know. I've seen it happen. Maybe in your world it doesn't happen. But when you think about it, no matter whether you're plant-based or whether you're animal-based, something is always going to die so that you can live. And this is like I was telling you with the iguana. If I let the iguanas roam free, I would have no fruits and vegetables to give to my friends. Yes, I, I, I have a way with I have <laughs> yes, I ha I have a way with uh, with guys. <laughs> okay, we're gonna need to edit that bit out. You know, if I shaved my hair off like a a possum that had just been caught, I. <laughs> That's the problem. We're respecting these animals, and that's all. That—that's a valid point. Okay, that—that's a valid point.